Okay, hello everyone and welcome to another Modular Podcast interview, uh, this time with Ian Boddy. Uh, quickly as we usually do, I'll run down the three of us. Um, all good, my end. Um, what about you, Matthew? Yeah, great, thanks. How are you? All good. Um, any Just quickly, any new gear acquisitions, sim stories, tales from the electronic world? Um, not particularly, no gear acquisitions or anything this month. I've just been... Uh, Using the bug brand system that I have a lot recently, just been uh, really enjoying that. The sort of restrictions and stripped down uh, of that, yeah. So, not much, but I've just been really getting into that recently. Ah, cool. Um, and you, Greg, how's it going? I'm good, Ben. Thanks. As you know, we had the um, Euro Crack event here in Dublin, yeah, it was good, really good in the um, science gallery at Trinity. Science gallery. Good fun. Cheers yeah. to everybody that showed up for that. Um, that, was a, that was a good score that in terms of a venue um, works really well yeah. uh, have you had any comeback from that since are you hoping to do it there again or have you not thought about um, it I've emailed them and they've asked when we do edit videos from it which we will do um, mm -hmm. we'll put up a bit of stuff from it just to send them on so yeah I'll yeah we'll some content from that soon um, and before we kick off uh, how's it going Ian yeah good thanks thanks for having me on Good fun. Yeah, it's good, um, and I'll enjoy the release. Before we get into that release, anything specific going on at the minute that you'd like to plug? Uh, the concert with, Na with Na uh, Nigel Mullaney in uh, Liverpool Capstan Theatre. I think I sent you the date. Is it the 18th of November? Yes, uh, I'll pull that up so Sat people can see. Yeah, it. Saturday the 18th of November. Nigel and I did a concert down at the uh, Cymru Beats in Cardiff. We're using lots of... Um, this kind of gear behind us, bit more of a lively set, obviously, than what's on Tone Science, but that's seemed to go down quite well. So the Liverpool is a lovely theatre, the Capstone, which I played there twice before, and they're going to put us on, and we're going to make uh, a lot of noise, a lot of cool things going on. So if people can make that concert, that would be great. I should say, and I'll, um, I won't play anything, but I can pull the image up. If anyone's wanted to check out some of the stuff with Nigel. Um, Sonic State covered the Cymru Beats event, and if you just put Ian Body, Nigel Mullaney in Google or YouTube, you'll find the video. There's a rig rundown that's great. I really like the um, use of the no coast in that video, the rig rundown, and then the performance as well. Yeah, I was just using the O coast as the voice for that Ons Martin. I've got the Ons Martin keyboard, the um, analog systems French connection. And uh, rather than tying up a voice in the uh, the big rack, I was purely using the orcos just to give the voice, and it's very it's an incredibly uh, expressive way of playing it. Oh, excellent! Yeah, we've got it. Oh, um, there it is. It's on there now. You can see the little uh, a little bit of slidey, a the slidey ring keyboard. Yeah, and I like that with a tuner on top and the no course. Yeah, it's, you've got to have a tuner. It's, it's it does sometimes drift. So if you try and play in tune, it's I keep half an eye on the air tuner in case it goes slightly flat. When it went out there with a really big, long up and down glissandos, sometimes it seems to go out of the tune. So it's handy keeping that in there. Just it's just to keep an eye on things. Yeah. Um, well, let's get into um, tone science. The kind of release we're here to talk about. It's a multi-format thing. Obviously, the show we're doing and a lot of the Sort of coverage we do is quite gear focused and i think mm. that's probably the first kind of thing to kick off with um, i mean you've told us but for the benefit of those watching um what were the kind of core systems that you were using for this release uh well i suppose the core systems the surge um the, the whole idea behind tone signs was um i wanted to do these self-playing uh, these huge patches which played themselves but I didn't want it just to be noise. Uh, not, not that there's anything wrong with noise, but I wanted to have a harmonic content. So obviously voltage quantizers were important in that. So I could actually force the randomness into various scales. So each of the five pieces which are on there has got a different mode or scale. Like there's a whole tone scale, for example, on one of the pieces. And that gives it um, a flavor on each piece. And there's a lot of random things going on, a lot of random events, things in and out of phase. Uh, the surge is great for that. I've got the um, the DUSG, the dual universal slope uh, generator, which is probably the beaten heart, what I call the beaten heart of the surge. I've got one of those, which has got two sides. I've also got 
uh, two pairs of DTGs as well, which are the slimmed down versions. So effectively, I can have six slow modulation sources, which could all be out of sync. Now, when you've got all these random things going on, you can get a patch, a patch to sound as though it's repeating, but actually never, ever, ever repeats. Because uh, yeah. all these things going in and out of phase. I likened, I likened it, I think I did it on the notes of tone science. If you sit on a riverbank and you look at a stream, which is a nice thing to do on a, 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 a sunny day, the stream kind of looks the same, but actually it never, ever, ever is exactly the same. Mm. And I was kind of really interested in that kind of idea. So obviously the surge has got a gorgeous sound. And then obviously I use various modules outside of the surge. I use make noise and dope and um, lots of other things to add to that as well. And I wanted to keep it 100% an, um, an, analog. So there's no digital effects. All the effects are Booker Brigade delays, the Mooga Fuga delay, spring reverb, uh, various effects. It's always all done 100%. And it's all live and physically when I recorded it, I didn't touch anything. So the composition, the composition is the patch. Yeah. You set it, the parameters for random yeah. and everything else to work within. Um, yeah. Very much your sort of school of thought, Matthew. That's where your kind of heads are at the minute. Oh yeah, certainly. I mean, that's, I, I would say like 95% of the pieces that I do are like generative pieces. Uh, you know, just auto composition, and certainly, I mean, obviously, you, you don't have, you can do it on virtually any modular synth, but certainly the surge itself lends itself very well to that. As Ian said about, like, um, like with the dual universal slope generator, it's just so, it is the beating heart of the system. You can, you can have very sort of long and slow modulation with that. And what's really good about, say, something like the surge, is that feeding in very very simple ideas like that into it give you these infinite possibilities it doesn't doesn't have to start off complex in fact it's actually quite good you know like I say feeding in a very minimal amount of information and then letting things like these evolving envelopes just take it in all sorts of different directions and then it becomes complex mm -hmm. by uh, simple ingredients I guess a question to both of you while well, we're talking about Surge. My Surge experience is purely yours, Matthew, just having had a few hours on it at yours from time to time. How do the Yoro offerings, either straight Surge clones or inspired by, such as Bafaco and Make Noise modules, how do they compare? Because I guess a lot of our audience are Yoro-based and potentially don't mm. want another format yet. I think we all get a kind of taste for it at some point. But how do they, have you found anything that's, come close or is it different but different in a good way or a bad way is there anything missing but for my experience i mean i built apart from one all, all the um uh, random source um surge stuff for euro yeah and sonically absolutely zero difference it's exactly the same it's just all the functionality is there everything's the same now that, that's fine but for me that's kind of only well, not so much half, but a, a large percentage of the experience is the fact that it is Banana Jack. Well, yeah. that's the whole modular thing for me. It's, it's the in, the whole thing is the interface. I think that's what we Yeah. So. Uh, so you've got that. So the sound bit, they've absolutely nailed. But with the Banana Connection is, I think I've mentioned it on other, other shows, that you can just keep patching, as in that there's no break or waiting for, oh, I need to get another multiple or I need to split that or... If I actually put this jack in, is it going to make a, you know, like an earth grounding sound? It doesn't do that because obviously the earth's out of the equation, as it were. So there is a lot to be said for doing that. But if you um, want to kind of dip your toe into it, I can thoroughly recommend the, the Euro Surge items that are out there. They're, they're very good, but it's kind of half the experience to me. Yeah, I think I think um, the. The surge is a cohesive front end. Yeah. It behaves as a single instru in instrument. Obviously, we've all got um, different manufacturers. I mean, looking at your system behind Ben, it's a right patchwork of stuff, which is great. But sometimes it doesn't feel like you're working on one instrument. There's lots of different things, lots of different colors and inputs. And with the surge, there's um, a logic behind it. 
it's very easy to it's well once you get the, your head around a few of the things there's a few strange things on the search when, when when i bought mine which is a few years back i had to get it from the states from the sts and it was very expensive so it's it's good now that the i'm glad what matthew said there it's really good that the random source of bringing this kind of sound more to the masses by having much much uh, cheaper because the sts is very expensive i mean it's beautifully made uh, but it is expensive and i i, I suppose the, uh, the closest module i've got is probably the maths yeah. It's a little bit like the, I mean, who doesn't have a maths? But the maths behaves a little bit like the DUSG. Not exactly the same, but that's the closest module I've got. And it's it's great. It's this idea on some of the modules of the surge, it behaves more an, an atomic kind of. You have to actually, depending on how you patch the DUSG up, it could be an oscillator, a filter, an LFO, an envelope, a, a voltage processor. It can be all these different things where a lot of the other modules tend to be just do one thing like a filter or an envelope happen tends just to be a filter or an envelope there's a few exceptions now but the surge does have this you can actually do different things to on each, each of the um, modules yeah does that in terms of way of thinking if you you know you could have a you could nearly have a voice at that point you know if, if one's an oscillator one's f another oscillator fm's the other one so you have some rich content the other one's the filter and you have another that's an lfo for the filter and another that's a slow lfo for one of the oscillators does that in any way get confusing as opposed to the kind of no not once you get used not once you get used to it when, when, when i first got the surge I, I was about four or five years ago i think now and over a, a relatively short space of time i got six 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 panels of it <clears throat> um some some nice air uh, some nice royalties came through the prs so i thought i'd better spend it quick before the tax man <laughs> saw this and um it didn't take me that long to get used to it i mean i can use the vcs3 and i've always said if you can use the vcs3 anything else is fairly straightforward to be honest um so the other thing about the surge it just sounds wonderful i can't really put my finger on why but it definitely has a sound i mean all a lot of synthesizers have us i mean a moog sounds like a moog a vcs3 sounds like a vcs3 an aop p2600 that has its own sound i definitely think the surge has its own sound don't ask me to describe what it is but it does have its own sound and if you like that sound well you can't really lose i think it's the sum of the parts well, yeah, isn't it? It, in, in all cases, I think that's interesting. So I don't think any of us, probably you included Ian, have a, a full single manufacturer, Yaro Rack no. system. And I think it, it's that experience. I know you work in small systems a lot, Matthew. We talk about that a lot, how <coughs> we've got these bigger systems, but we like just taking two or three roles and saying, right, for today, this is going to, yeah. I'm going to create drones on this or drums or beats or whatever, but I'm just going to use this system today. But I, I guess that's the different experience. I mean, companies like Make Noise offer their shared system, which I've had a quick play around on, but not had one here for any length of time. Um, I think it's that as much as anything. Yeah. Knowing that the, the peak voltage of that envelope is meant to fully open that filter or VCA or low pass gate, or there's kind of no, and I guess some would argue that's the beauty of modular, but there's none of this kind of weird interfacing and, oh, well, this envelope needs boosting a bit to fully open this other company's filter or I need to rectify and then attenuate this or I guess it's just everything talking to each other. Um, well, I mean, the thing I was sorry. sorry no, no. What Ian said earlier about like, a, like almost like an atomic level, that's something I've sort of, ex my experience with Surge, I, I kind of sum it up as, as it being, it's like a scalpel, it's like super precise is the Surge. And again, what they've kind of done, which like a lot of other manufacturers have tried to make things in inverted commas more musical by reining in the uh, oscillators to work within a sort of a musical area. Well, like Surge can do that, but it goes into super low clock speeds and then beyond human hearing. Yeah. Well, and that, I like that. So you may think, well, what's the point of it going beyond human hearing? Well, that could be all sorts of interesting thing happening there as a modulation source so yeah, there's yeah. a whole world of am and fm to explore once you go yeah. Sorry. Yeah, exactly and that's why i like and this, this the the oscillators I, I just think they're just super stable they are very stable i, I tend I, honestly i've gone away for two or three weeks come back 
turned it on and they're still in tune oh yeah absolutely crazy mm. yeah well interestingly i guess we're bouncing off you ian and matthew as yeah. the kind of two people we search me and greg sat um, upset we don't have any um, <laughs> but um very different schools of thought i know you like um systems on their own matthew and tend not to kind of intermingle the two um, yeah. And I'll pull some pictures up. Ian, I'd go quite the opposite, certainly for this release, oh, yeah. in terms of Yaro into Surge, Surge into Yaro, yeah. CV back and forth. Um, is that in any way because you feel one system's better at one thing than another, or just what's the well, hand, or this, the, this, on one and sequencing on another? Or Yeah, I, I think one module I should mention quite well, which I use a lot in these um, random when I say they're random, because they're not totally air random, because a totally random piece would be white noise. So it's controlled yeah. air randomness. It's the uh, is it the A one four nine? It's the Dofa one, which is a bit, which is a bit kind of based on the uh, the Buckler voice of uncertainty. Yeah, I have yeah. that. Well, I don't have it in Buckler. I'm afraid that that's uh, the surge is expensive enough, let alone yeah. get into Buckler. But the the, the little A one four nine one. The, the 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 door for one and i've got the um the random gate uh, which goes with that so you you send in a clock can be from anything and it can extract eight random gates that's the one yeah i've got the a1492 which goes beside beside it as well and what that means is uh, based on a, an incoming clock i can send eight random gates out and if i run it slow enough these random gates really are um Quite far apart, and I by using the interfacing, I've got various. I've got little, a handy little thing at the top of the surge. I've got like a custom panel. It's got eight uh, banana jacks to jacks, so I can use mini jacks to jacks from my uh, Dofa kind of system into that. So I can trigger the DTGs and the DUSGs on the surge from that voice of uncertainty. That's that's the old studio there. Uh, you can see the two are interfacing and they actually work fine. You've got to make sure the ground, you've got a ground on oh, there's the Roland system of 100M. Should also mention that of course. So there's three different systems and they, they all work fine. They all work fine. And there's some things I've got on on the system on, on the left, uh, Schwerman for example, I've got the lovely phase shifter which, the, which, which they do um i use the maths i've got oscillators in there as well but the core of the sound particularly on tone science came from the surge it was more modulation sources and gates which were coming from the other system apart from a couple of tracks where i was also doing a voice on the roland system 100m so i'll, I'll quite happily mix and match depending on what i want to do i must admit Ian, that i've really championed the uh, the duff for a random module it's kind of a bit of an unsung one you know yes yeah, nice i mean there's lots out there on the market now but I, I got that ages ago. It's probably one of my first random ones with the gate option out. And it's just yeah. great. And it's really cheap as well compared with a lot of other stuff out there. And I mean, Dofa, a I mean, kind of module. people seem to forget about Dofa these days because obviously there's so much more choice now. I think Dofa, I can't even remember when I bought my Dofa system, but it was probably the 1990s. I don't know, I don't know when the, how long they've been going out for, but when I bought my original couple of racks of door fat that was just about the only choice you had you don't you didn't have all the other choices yeah i, I don't know what the, well certainly don't for first was it analog systems then solutions or solutions then systems i've got i've got i've got some of their stuff as well i mean i mentioned the french connection keyboard and i, I don't know if you can see behind me uh, i've also got a, a rack of uh, the analog system stuff yeah and that so, was i don't know when the next one kind of who came yeah. It was kind of it was, it was funny because obviously I've been working on with this stuff for quite a while. I think probably 1978, 1979, believe it or not. I know I don't look that old, but you know, uh, when I started getting into the VCS3 and during the 80s, you know, everyone went and bought DX7s, including me. And analog synthesizers, the module almost disappeared. Into the 90s, you could pick them up so cheap, but I kept mine and I kept playing with them, and it's been amazing the last five six years the resurgence is, is one it's wonderful it's great to see all these a lot of new generation people coming through and starting to get into it now and the choices now there's so much more choices it's it's, it's a it's fab mm. um i'd like to get into kind of approaches there's some notes for the third track and i won't play any of this i don't want youtube kind of flagging up copyright or anything um what i will say though on this note if people haven't realized yet there's always links in the descriptions from us um for everything but if people want to go on to 
um, dinrecords.bandcamp or just put Tone Science Din or Tone Science Ian Body. Um, you can have a listen through, you can grab it, there's a preview of these tracks. But in the notes that you sent us um, over for this release, I'll leave an image of the cover up. Yeah. Um, for that third piece, and it's a little bit like some of the kind of patching like doing, like saying controlled random. You mentioned using the uh, TKB to create a series of notes alongside the sequence from the Rene, but then the master clock is the make noise woggle bug into a divider yeah. and out into a uh, into the um, source of uncertainty, the dot for A149. Um, do you have any kind of, I guess that's one trick, have you any kind of tricks for musical random? Because we're all certainly big fans of random and we can talk endlessly about this kind of stuff, but well, yeah, I mean, you just, I mean, obviously using the voltage quantizer, I've got the um, Intelligel, um, what's what's it called, U scale? Yeah. Micro scale, I've got one of those. I've got a couple of Dofa quantizers as well. So uh, that voice of uncertainty is great because you can take uh, the top, I use the top half, bottom bottom of the two knobs. I can't remember. One of them does, does octaves and one of them does uh, semitones. Yeah, there's the DKB, and the, my, I've got a big spring tank for the. I've got the Dofa Reaver, but that's a bigger Accutronic spring tank. Um, so you take the you, you, you clock the voice of uncertainty, uh, the Dofa A1491. You take the output into this to the U scale, and obviously I program. I also work in various modes and scales. I don't just have semitones. Different modes. I will. I'll work in five five note scales, six note scales, whole tone scales. They've all got a flavour to themselves. And what's cool with the A149 is you can voltage control the range. So, for example, you can get the range to be quite compact. So it's only given, it's only spitting out notes that are spanning over an octave. Mm. But by putting a modulation source into there, from time to time, you can actually expand that voltage range. So the, the pitches start quite tight, and then they get to go further and then they can come back in again you can either do it by hand i mean you can send another random source into that of course it just depends on what you want to do so that's quite a nice way of doing it and as, as i said the top one can do octaves so you could also mix those two voltage sources yeah. so you had a compact range of notes being forced to a scale but with octaves going on and then as the modulation increases that octaves and modulating scales will get a bit wider in, in you know so but it, I, I, I would experiment a lot. There's so much stuff on the internet about various scales. Work with, you know, work with pentatonic scales. The whole tone scale I've mentioned a few times. Do, are you guys familiar with the whole tone scale? Yeah, just every interval is a tone. It is, and no semitones. Ah. It's instant 1950s B-movie sci-fi soundtrack kind of feel. It has a weightless feel because it never resolves, because there's no, se no semitones. It can never, ever re resolve. So it just kind of floats, stuff like that. So thinking from a musical point of view, you got all this gear, but there's still a bit of music has to be put in to get it to sound like a piece of music in the end, if you see what I mean. And that's all part of the composition process, of course. So being aware of various scales and modes is a very good thing. They're all searchable as well, I should say. Oh, if yeah. anyone's thinking, I, you know, this isn't my background, potentially, just search it, just put scale names. There's It's no more difficult. It, it's no more difficult in using the kind of kit behind. There's loads of guys out there know how to use the kit, so it's no more difficult than no. that. No, it, it, it's not. And things like, um, I've said a few times on the internet, you know, bore people with the life in, inside of the education system, but I teach in and out of schools and things, and taking a minor scale and raising the seven so it becomes a harmonic minor instantly makes everything sound Eastern. Yeah, like Middle Eastern, yeah. You, Middle that's Eastern the, kind of flavour. And it, just yeah. a simple trick of knowing that that one shift on your yeah. quantizer will transform the feel of the whole piece. There's interest, There's lots of tricks to explore as well. Interestingly, that harmonic minor uh, raises the third in the, in the fifth chord, so the perfect uh, cadence, if you're composing in a more classical sense, hmm. actually sounds more resolved with a more kind of unresolved sounding scale. There's loads of fun tricks to explore. And they're, they're tiny things that a quick Google, just like you would trying to find one of our videos or someone else. Yeah. A diminished one's nice. All minor thirds, C, E flat, F sharp, A. Got a beautiful feel. Yeah. Beautiful. And I think with quite extended harmony as well, spreading those voices out. So any clashes in a key are, you know, an octave away from each other. 
Well, sometimes you can have the notes of a scale at a higher pitch, and if your bass is two or three octaves down, you can have notes that would sometimes clash, but because of the distance between mm. the high notes and the low notes, it's fine. Yeah. The only yeah. rule, the only rule is that there's no rule. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> it's, I like that you've touched on that, and that each release on Tone Science is a separate flavour and scale. So. Well, that's what I hope for, yeah. I think it works really well. Um, on the TKB, I, I like what you said, I'll pull the TKB back up, about there's a chance that something will happen. Playing with ranges as opposed to a definite, this random gate will shift the whole sequence up an octave or something. I like the creating a chance that something might happen, but it might not. Yeah. That, I like playing with... Um, uh, VCAs are quite good for that in that if you put a sample and hold or smooth random into a VCA and then use another random to control the CV level of the VCA, yes. you may open the VCA fully, but that doesn't mean a full five volts is going to come through because the input signal might not be five volts. Well, there's very subtle things as well, like on the surge, it's quite easy to do this, is if I want vibrato on a certain voice, I can get an LF4. Um, which on the surge could be one of the uh, one of the oscillators will run as an LF4 and, a, and a, an audio pitch, or it could be the DGG, DGG. So I've got an LF4 doing vibrato, but don't just do vibrato. Actually, have a random or another modulation source controlling the rate of the vibrato, but also put the vibrato through um, a voltage processor first, which you got another slow morphing CV to fit it in and out. So the vibrato is mm. not there all the time. It fades in and it'll fade out in a random kind of way. And you're randomly controlling the rate of the vibrato. It sounds a much more of a human way of doing vibrato than just a simple LFO there all, all the time. Of course, that's what I can do on the French Connection keyboard whereby we, uh, by wiggling the, uh, the wire, I can control the speed and rate and when I have vibrato, which is a very expressive way of playing. But if you can do that in a modular format, it gives a lot more expression. Yeah, that's that's a nice tip for those that want something random and human in a completely non-random patch. The amount we talk about this, we inevitably get people saying, "Yeah, but I'm not into random." No, what oh, do you mean you're not into random? Fun. It's like saying I don't like filters or I don't like wave folders or, mm. you know. And I always try and pull it back to to playing an instrument. If you're trying to play a very repetitive thing whether that's a hi-hat pattern or plucking a chord or string it's never a hundred percent going to be the same because we're not we're not no one's machine like so i think lots of little subtle bits of random um and i like that that's how this is working as well as a as a sort of um release as a whole um i wanted to mention the tkb because i've recently um, we'll get into it too much, but sequences have kind of taken a bit of a turn out of my system for various reasons at the minute. And I've been playing around with the make noise pressure points, which mm. certainly lends a lot of influence um, from the TKB. Oh, yeah, sure. You've got one as well, Matthew. Um, I, I like, do either of you kind of use that with random clocks or random direction changes? or There's, there's a way of patching up a TKB. Uh, I, I can't remember. We're, we're, uh, there's not a lot of documentation comes with the surge. If you patch, just I'll just check. <laughs> if you patch uh, the random select to the to the reset, and then take then multiply the incoming clock to that, it'll randomly step. Yeah, entirely random. So you, so you can actually set up a random step mode. You can also voltage control the uh, di direction. There's four rows of 16. Not only do you have individual outs, you've got um, um, outs which are the addition of A, B, C, and D. You can also clock horizontally and uh, ver ver vertically. And those numbers are pressure points. You can actually press into those. I've, I'm the way around. I've just bought a pressure point as well, which is very good. But those, those on the surge, you also get pressure out of those. So it's an incredibly uh, versatile... And it's run, it's run the clock at it, 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 uh, it, uh, an, an old audio rate. You can use it as a wave shaper. You can actually go get it to wave shape an, os an os oscillator. Mm. You can run it at audio rates. Also, another really good tip I like doing with mine as well is making lots of very small sequences. So, for instance, you could have like a, a two or a three note sequence, mm. and then you. Um, you patch that with all the patch points, so you can you can effectively make lots of little groups 
and they can just touch each of the plates and obviously it will cycle through those particular, that particular little sequence. So you might have something just moving up and down an octave or you may have a completely separate sequence. So yeah, as Ian said, it's just super versatile. It, it may look like it's just the same thing repeated, which it kind of is, but you can just do so much with it. I'll pull, um, I'll pull an image up of um, just a TKB. So are you doing that by, having not done this, I'm guessing, so tell me if I'm wrong, are you are you patching the reset, say step three back out into the reset so it cycles around three steps, but then you'll also patch, say, step nine into a reset. How are you? Correct. Yeah, that's exactly it. That kind of yeah. step. So you you might press button five and it will go between that and step nine and reset back again. Or yeah. exactly. If if you if you reset it step nine, so you got eight steps, and you press number five, step five, it lends a cycle from five to eight. Yeah. If you press step three, it lends cycle from three to eight. Uh, if you then pull out the the gate coming from step nine, it'll then go all six, all six, all sixteen. Hmm. At, at the same time, you could have it in a random set, or you could have a. Um, there's a button for uh, no, it's a little switch for um, changing direction. The only thing I really wish it could do, which would be amazing, is if each each row could have a different uh, length. Uh, so you could have one going sixteens, one going nines, one going twelves, one that down. That would be cool. Mm. Yeah, yeah there are some slight variations with them. Like mine, mine has got a slightly different way of addressing the direction. Yeah, this is an STS panel. Yeah. I've pulled that's, the that's the one I've got. Yeah. So does it remember the step that you pressed? If you're saying you, it will reset at step nine, we patch that in, and you press seven, it will just go seven to nine, and it yes. remembers that seven. Yeah. Is that yeah. one. Okay. Then, then if you press step five, it'll go five to nine. Yeah. So I'm just trying to think with a pair of pressure points, how can I kind of mimic? I don't think I can mimic that. It's slightly different. I mean, the pressure points is very good. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I really like it. it. It just it reminds me of that way of working. I've been back to pressure points um, and expanded them behind that power supply at the bottom of that case with a couple of analog memories. So it's eight rows of eight. And it's right. fantastic running sequential switches that you you are using on this release, running random into the switching. It's not particularly random in terms of musicality. It's just two sequences that may switch at a point that I don't define, um, which works well. I don't think I can do the lots of short sequences around each other though. Well, I guess it's four. It's four steps of sixteen. That would be quite a lot of pressure points. Mm. Yeah. 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 I guess I mean, even if I just wanted to go with two of them chained next to each other, I don't know if I could go, say, one to four, but then five to nine, and just go five to nine. I don't think you can, because I've, I've got two and the brains with it. Yeah, the expansion. Um, I don't think you can, but, yeah, it's just one of those, I mean, again, it's got multiple uses, or, or it can be just one great big giant sequencer, or it can yeah. be, like, say, a little two-note, strange or, thing happening you know or, or sometimes you just patch it in so you haven't got it in sequence mode you, you just basically touch the buttons to trigger various um, um, mod, mod, modulation so you can kind of have it like a stored stored cvs which of course the pressure points couldn't do yeah but uh, they're the kind of two ways i really like using the pressure points i like looking at it as almost one big quantizer where every knob is a potential setting for pitch but it might not be musical pitch just a voltage stored voltage on that knob turn and that's it and it that's they're the only values it can be it may randomly step through them you can build up your own kind of thing of chance if you're moving around four steps and one of them is full so that's five volts say if that's the peak of the sequence uh, peak of the output sorry and the rest are off you kind of get a one in four chance if you're randomly cycling through that that you'll get a high voltage or not um that's quite a fun way to interact but then i Almost like looking at it as presets, which is probably a loaded word for a modular audience, but <laughs> it, it, it's not. You know, it's four, it's four, four voltages and that's it, or three on a pressure point if it's just on its own. Simply, you might just have it into a quantizer where you're just using that to shift the sequence up and down. Yeah. Yeah. Or filter settings, you know, the top row might be decay level on the envelope. You might have the filter cut off on the other, the pulse width modulation on another one, and the transpose of another voltage. So not only do you shift the step and say, I want to transpose up 
if or an octave or whatever. I want the filter to close a bit, but I want the decay to open a bit more at the same time. Um, it's like you said, stored voltages is probably a more accurate way to describe it. I, I kind of think it of presets of that current pack, if you like, stored states of what's going on. Has uh, anyone tried to replicate it in kind of Euro? I mean, obviously, apart from, I suppose, the nearest thing is the pressure point. So it's, yeah, I think the pressure uh, point, I suppose three, uh, no, sorry, four, four pressure points with brains is probably the closest you're going to get. And I, I'm sure, I can't think of the top of my head, but I'm sure the pressure points will do things the surge TKB can't and vice versa. But if you've got either a TKB or pressure point, it's both good. No, oh, yeah, yeah, certainly. Two I were thinking of are more like the music easel. Yeah, that's the... Um, I was thinking Sputnik. Jeans thing and the Sputnik. Yeah, I was thinking Sputnik for that one. Yeah, Ar Ar um, Archangel sequencer thing that were a bit like that, weren't it? It, it had some pressure points and a sequence bit, do you remember? Oh, yeah, yeah. and then there's the Virgo. Like the um, Sound Machines one we see in the prototype uh, Super Booth bit. It was more like the Buchla one. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, the, the Sound Machines... Um, I can't remember the name. You're right about it being this, this year's Super Booth. Um, Ar Archangel was that something to do with STG? Super yeah, Tiger. Yeah, Super Tiger. Well, I, th I don't know if it actually came out or it was just prototype ones. Or uh, but that had a pressure sensitive panel and a run of um, knobs. Found it. Oh yeah. I think it was more sequence based. All right. Yeah, like there we go. So that's more like the kind of touch plates, sixteen along the bottom. Yeah, four rows of sixteen. It looks like a kind of digital top end. Well, digital. Yeah. Digital top of the unit, not top end in any uh, voltage sense. Yeah, with plenty of outs or ins. Um, but yeah, I guess pressure points. I think you're right. In a few pressure points, is the closest you're going to get um, in the brains expander. Um, it's a nice way of working. Mm. Yeah, because I mean, you've got the di you've got the direction, haven't you, on the the brains expand a bit. You haven't got random, have you? No, you can reset. You can um, you can change direction as well. Yeah, uh, you can separate it by plugging in jacks to brains so that the sequence can keep the steps can keep being clocked through, but you can still play yeah. without halting the sequence. You can patch that in. I think I think one of the first patches I only got mine about probably less than a month ago. One of the first patches I did was to tune the three ro the, the three rows of four, go through um, what do you call it um, the sequential switch, and then use the trick with the A one four nine one again to to clock both that and the, and the um, pressure points. Send random clocks to the reset and the um, what's it called now. Um, reset and start i think mm. as well as the sequential switch so i constantly it was constantly changing because it wasn't only changing the row that was being addressed randomly through the sequential switch it was randomly thrown gates at the reset so it, it kept yeah. going back and but it would depending which row and suddenly three rows of 12 sounded like a lot more of a complex sequence than it actually was yeah it's just misleading how and i think that's I guess the kind of surge paradigm. It's misleading how basic some of this stuff looks. A um, couple of things added to it. Um, the other unit we should mention, while well, we're all kind of stuck in surge love, um, <laughs> we are at the minute. I don't know about you still, uh, Ian. Um, there's certainly some bass sounds from the Roland System 100M on this release as well. Um, is that all kind of married in? Is it? Do you run things separately, or just? No, it was all done live. It was all done at the same time. That that was the biggest patch, I think, on, on mode three, which I think I sent you a, a photograph. It's quite a, it's a huge, kind of wide screen shot of the whole thing going at once. Uh, the Roland Hundred M. I originally bought the original five part, the five uh, mo uh, mo uh, modules. I bought that in nineteen eighty two or eighty three, and I've kept it the whole time, and I've somehow acquired more over the years um the 100m is a beautifully simple uh, system the um it's really nice how all the multiples are grouped underneath how all the the modulation sources are at the bottom of the um the racks how all the 
inputs are at the top. The Schwemen are a bit like that. I, I'm, I'm not sure whether Schwemen kind of look a little bit like that, if you know, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and again, the 100M just has a beautiful sound. It, it doesn't sound like a Moog, which obviously it was around at the same kind of time. It's not as, um, as heavy and uh, weighty as a Moog sound, but it does have a beautiful sound. And uh, you can see all the, the patch cables there, and there's a little analog systems or solutions more, uh, rack there, which is kind of, this cables come right away from the left, the right-hand side from the surgeon, surgeon the, or the regates and that going on to kind of multiple, multiple across. So all, it's all playing in time, but, but all the random things are going on. So the whole patch happened at once. As I said, it took, this patch took me maybe three days to fine tune the whole thing. And then I tend to record 30, 30 minutes of it. And then the only thing I have to do is decide which 10 to 12 minutes I'm going to cut out. I must yeah. admit, listening to it, though, the, the entire album, is it sounds very cohesive, as it yeah. doesn't sound like, oh, that's an added bit from this synthesizer, or that's no. going from there. You, you know, you can't pinpoint, in my, just in my personal opinion, where right. this is coming from, and I think that's a, a good sign, actually, you know. Yeah, I well, thought that as well. Sorry, I well, yes. I mean, uh, for me, for me, uh, that uh, technology should always be subservient to the piece that you're trying to do. Everyone loves fiddling around with these toys because it's great fun. But the 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 composition is for me the most important thing. So the gear has to serve what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to say something. I'm trying to create a certain mood or tone, and the gear's great. But it it has to it has to do what I want it to do. Yeah, it means to an end, as it were. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't too obvious. I mean, I knew that you had some Surge, the System 100M, some Yara Rack. Uh, some of the tones, I weren't sure where they were coming from in terms of could that have been the AFG you run through some of your filters or your QMMG. Or it, 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 I liked um, how kind of well a, blurred between the formats. There wasn't an <laughs> obvious, oh, that's the Surge doing its thing. I'll tell you what, one, one tone, if you listen to it again, I think it, it's on a couple of the pieces... On the surge is the Wilson Air Delay, the Book of Brigade de Delay, which is the grungiest, nastiest Book of Brigade Delay you've ever heard. But it can do some weird stuff, drones and feedback loops. And there's a kind of a buzzy, almost like a bit reduction kind of effect. And that's the Wilson Delay running at a very, at one of its longer delay times where you can really hear the clock kind of starting to come through and you've really got to filter out the noise but it gives us and I'm kind of sweeping the filter on that and it gives us kind of weird almost like a bit reduction kind of graininess to the sound that's quite a distinct distinctive sound that's the one that's you know for for surge users as it were that's the kind of holy grail yeah the holy grail module it, it's nice. stupidly expensive for what it is yeah. i don't think it's yeah. made anymore is it i mean someone will correct me on no. it i think because of the one of the parts in it is very hard to get now. Possibly, I mean, it, it sounds it sounds rubbish, <laughs> but in a good way. <laughs> I mean, there was a kind of Yaro version of it. There's a version of the Surge panel. I didn't know it was a bucket brigade. I've seen this as being such a highly regarded. Delay. Well, I'm, I'm, I don't know the technicalities. Maybe it's not. So if if I'm incorrect in my technical well, assessment, please correct me. But it, it's. Uh, I mean, it, could, it very well could be. I didn't. I, I didn't know where what it was i just knew it was so kind of highly regarded it's not something that you get for doing long delays is it Ian? it's not something that you go and delay, no. delay, delay. it's 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 more in kin to sort kind of chorus in chorus you, might, you yeah. might get you might get half a second out of it but you can actually feed all because of the banana plugs it's really easy to feed stuff back into itself and when you feed back into the, this uh, delay you can get some excruciatingly nasty drones i mean some really harsh metallic stuff but in a good way <laughs> well couple that with something else you know <coughs> treat all of that as your oscillator and then run it through further shaping or filtering or um anything else uh, uh, we certainly embrace noise matthew huge pt delay fan i think we're all we're certainly the bug brand pt delays um works really well um what was i just going to say yeah in the system 100 m mm. got the is it the reich sequencer that the metropolis and then the du seek were based on this one yeah, oh, yeah. 
Yeah. Don't make me want to buy one. One. Don't make me want to buy one of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was just made for one person, weren't it? So mm, yes. Yeah, that's what the Metropolis is based on. It is. Yeah. And that's not an original uh, System One Hundred M module. No, no I've got the yeah. else's design, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. I've got the 100M uh, sequence. It's not that great. Uh, sorry, I mistook it. I was looking at this picture and um, I saw top system, top uh, second system. to right module. I saw the row of knobs and thought, oh, that's the sequencer. But, um, just yeah. a really basic the, the 182. Oh. It's two rows of eight, which you can run in. in, in uh, so you can run it as two rows of eight or one row of 16. It's very basic compared with um, what some of the sequences you can get nowadays. There is a lovely trick I've got on the 100M. Uh, I've actually got four pairs of VCOs. You can see on the bottom right-hand module, there's three pairs of VCOs. Mm. And I do this thing where I take the output of the first VCO into the FM input of the second, the output of the second into the FM input of the third, the output of the third into the FM input of the fourth, then the output of the fourth back into the input of the first, and then you turn them all up, and it just screams. <laughs> you, can get some, you can get some incredibly complex, strange, nasty, but sometimes some gorgeous little talk, and you can just leave it, and the, the little tiny voltage variation sometimes makes the sound become unstable, and it kind of all goes, and then it kind of settles down again. And I've never been able to quite repeat that on any other uh, system. Yeah, that's the kind of thing I would, you know, I, I, mean, I don't mean matching that sound perfectly, but that's the kind of thing I was talking about with the surge stuff when you start doing these kind of FM tricks. Hmm. When I mentioned about, oh, what's the point of it going past human hearing is when you get into that realm of just things, it only needs the finest little drift of something to hmm. happen to make it sound unbelievably great and complex. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's like the um, it's like an analog version of FM operators, like the Yamaha synths. You know, one feeds the FM of the other, and there'll be a depth, whether that's VCA style depth control where you can CV it. Um, but then having the feedback as well, I think there's an algorithm. Very different sound being digital, and their new old stock Yamaha chips as well on the Akemi's Castle. That is for one into two, all of that into three into four, and then the <coughs> feedback as well back, on Akemi's yeah. Castle. Um, so you can kind of far yeah. unstable kind of far yeah. FM, but being digital, the the tuning's way more stable. It's not drifting like a lot of harsher FM does in analog, which is great. But then you don't get this odd creature like, -like thing that just keeps happening. Like you said, it'll almost level out. Yeah, it's less organic, but in they chaotically go off on one again for ten minutes and then come back down again. Um, you kind of lose all that, but gain some stability in pitch. Um, which works really well. So, can we touch on the um, analog effects? Because I think that, well, I don't know actually. I, I was, was going to say the effects seem to have created this really cohesive, but um, kind of thick, unifying, almost kind of sound across the pieces. Mm. Um, so what? Yeah, the, I'm, I'm going to have to turn yeah. around to, to remember what these things are called. I've got the. Uh, the Schwerman SPH2, the spatial air phaser. Yeah. So and was then, everything, was that the first, everything hit that? that no, no, it, it, it was a mixture on different uh, pieces. And there was, I, I, I wanted it to um, stay all, and all in the um, analog world. I mean, we've all got lovely uh, um, plug-in air reverbs, but they, they kind of put a sound onto stuff. They actually give it its own sound. Mm. And I wanted to stay clear of that. Um, the spring reverb we mentioned before, using the big Architronics tank. I've also got the um, Analog Systems Bucket Brigade Delay, which is the, um, uh, what's it called? The RS390, which is quite long delays on that. So uh, the the, the, the uh, Mooga Fuga delay I used as well. The, 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 the Moog delay is very nice. Mm. So um, kind of, um, approach then, was this... Was the first patch done and then partly pulled, rearranged, and put back no, again? That's they were done. It, was done, it was done over a number of months. Um, in fact, I changed their uh, studios in the, uh, the middle of this. All uh, right. It sounds to me like a cohesive body of work where you've oh, got some parameters 
maybe pulled a little bit of the patch, rejigged no. the random parameters. Yeah. Oh, it took three days to do a patch and then I pulled every single cable out. <laughs> then I went for a beer and I had a, a lie down. <laughs> but I didn't necessarily take one patch out and then start straight away again. I, I might have waited a couple of weeks. Mm. I, I wanted to have like a different mindset for each patch. The only really big decision I made ahead of time was I worked on, as I said before, a scale or a mode. I worked out actually what notes I wanted to to, to use, and yeah. then I create. I, I, I would play a sort of regular keyboard, work out what notes I want to use, and then I would build the patch. There's certain repeat repeating certain certain things which repeat in each of the patches. Like I use the A149 with the random gates and the, all the slow modulation sources on the surge, but each one does a different thing. So they've each got their own mood, mood, but as you say, it's a cohesive whole. I wanted to pre present a very well crafted suite of music on CD, nicely done on a digipack using all this gear. Because I don't think many people have had a chance to do that. There's lots of YouTube videos and people doing little bits and bobs. But I wanted to present a suite of tracks properly professionally pressed on CD, I, I guess. Yeah. Well, it sounds to me like you've gone right this week. I'm going away and I'm doing this and I'm going to come back yeah. with a body of work. It sounds cohesive. Um, it certainly doesn't sound like there's months between or a studio change. There was, yeah, there was. In fact, funny, today I actually went through the patches that patch I sent you mm. and I did this. I just quickly, I don't know if you can hear it or not. I don't know if that's coming through or not. Yeah, yeah, can hear that. So... It's it's kind of like the third piece, but it doesn't. It's not the same because I could never ever repeat exactly what I did. I was just going to say if that's a sort of inspired by your patch notes, how close have you managed to get? Fifty percent of the way there, <laughs> if that. And these are um, they're certainly pretty extensive notes. I'll copy these into the video description. Um, it was so a complicated patch that one. As I said, that pro probably took me the best part of three days. Just finally tuning it until I was happy. Mm. Well, did you use that phasery in a lot on the the, the Schwemann one? I've not come yeah, across that. It's before. beautiful. Oh, There's a phaser. I love their phasers. The Roland System 100M, I've got a pair of phasers on there, and they're all swishy and lots of noise, and they're gorgeous. The phasers on the Surge are very clean, but you can do some interesting things with them. The Schwemann phaser's got a lovely st st stereo swooshiness to it for want of a better fr a phrase but that was quite nice you see having some of the I, I would mold out some of the sound from the surge and i might take it through the schwerman phaser and then yeah i've got the green face but there you go and then i would take that through the spring reverb sometimes i would go to the spring reverb fade first and then phase that which is quite a different effect but i kept all the effects in the analog domain well i was thinking that the track four on the album particularly I, I liked it's almost like got a darker squishy sort of modular in the background it kind of ah uh, that's the whole tone one it reminded me a little bit of kind of like you know richard barbera's kind of keyboard playing or you know from japan he has in the, in the more experimental sounds in the background he has mm. there's a funny sort of dark squishy phasering that he uses mm. yeah nice I like um, just that playing with effects order as well. Some of this may seem basic to the sort of audience we have, but we certainly get people that come and ask questions where it isn't necessarily the front of their mind. The difference in reverb then phaser or phaser then reverb is huge. Mm. Um, and, and, and using the spring reverb is nice. I mean, I recently got clouds, which is, is wonderful. It's it's really nice. In fact, I'm using clouds on this latest patch. I couldn't I couldn't resist. And of course. It's a digital reverb kind of sound, mm. which he got in plugins, of course. But although it's different on clouds, I'm I'm sending a random gate to the freeze so I can occasionally freeze yeah. it. But using the old spring reverb gives a certain charm to the sound, shall we say? Well, yeah. we're all certainly fans of spring reverbs, aren't we? It's just like, yeah, it's, there's, there's nothing that can be beaten about. It. There's something about it though that just lends itself so well to electronic music mm. i find it just puts it's not that it suddenly makes everything sound the same 
but it, I don't know if it's just its frequency ranges and stuff. It just seems to fit perfectly with that vibrating spring with an electronic music. I couldn't help myself. I had to buy one of these. Oh, yes. <laughs> seen that in the background. Yeah, the moisturiser um, from McDowell. Yeah, I couldn't help myself. Like you, Ian, I know Greg's the same. Possibly you as well, Matthew. We've all got the small... I'll show you the difference because they're both here. The small tank from Dokefer and the larger tank. Yeah, I've got the bigger tank as well. I've just got the small one. Oh, we're, going to shot, we're going to start talking about the size of our tanks now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it, I mean, looking at oh, that, my, that instant, my instant thought was that would be the similar to yours in a kind of yes, 19... exactly the same. And the big ones, yeah. And then the little Belton that comes with it. That's not that, for me at least, this one, and you've got to kind of follow the impedance codes to match your equipment. Yeah. That's not that much longer of a reverb than this one is. Tonally quite different. The yeah. big one to me sounds more like a kind of stone room, like an untreated hotel lobby almost. Hard surfaces are everywhere, floor, ceiling, walls. The little one sounds more like a traditional spring. Um, but this I, when I were looking into it, I thought, you know, from a layman's perspective, I thought, bigger spring, longer reverb. I did, yeah. I thought, well, this is three times the length of this. I let it be really long decay. I wanted a longer reverb. It's not necessarily. Um, but the feedback I, works quite differently with the longer one. It takes some doing, doesn't it? Yeah. Certainly on the Dot for A199, you have to push the feedback a lot more to get... Something yeah. to, with that length for it to, get, to almost like resonate. You wonder if it just needs that extra... Well, it can take a long time before it starts. All right. Feeding back. It just... Yeah, the time before it starts feeding back is a lot, lot longer. Mm. But I think that the longer tank I have is two springs instead of three. They're a lot looser than the small one. There's, there's lots of, obviously, mechanical real-world factors, excuse me, as to why it sounds different. I, uh, I, uh, I actually like to play my live, that concert uh, at the... Um, uh, I actually had it on stage and I was hitting with with mallets and there's a trick where I get a patch cake cable with a smooth plastic coating between the springs and I gently rub it and you get like it's almost like train wheel squeals so it's quite it's quite a physical thing and it's actually quite cool on stage you can actually see somebody physically doing something rather than a, a laptop just being there if you know what I mean it's quite nice to to do physical things on stage I'd certainly encourage anyone out there you know in sort of module world who maybe just thinks oh well i just do all my effects in a door or mm. whatever or i've got a pedal or something is their answer to an effects is just the spring reverb is just a whole lot of fun like mm. it, you can touch it you can press it you can dampen it you can it just it goes so well with electronic music mm. should uh, point out um i don't think any of us have got it but the spring ray from which looked like the kind of ultimate Yoro rack spring yeah. thing when it yeah. came out. I still want one, but just not picked one up, that kind of usual situation. Uh, but the manual, which, you know, again, a lot of people kind of go, oh, God, I don't want to read a manual. <laughs> it's not particularly a manual on spring reverb, but there's some really good patch examples, not just control overview. I mean, it's going through what all the, all the functions are, the feedback control, how the limiter works. Um, there's some tilt EQs in there, but there's some, I'll pull them up. And you can apply these to anything. It's a bit like reading the old kind of Moog manuals or the old Roland manuals. There's a brilliant one for the mini Moog that has a kind of, here's a violin patch, here's a brass yeah. patch for them. And obviously none of them now, a bit yeah. like how an 808 was supposed to be a real drummer to accompany live musicians. None of them sound like that. But this works in a similar way to just take things from it. There's a patch, this one just there on screen, the saw wave cello, where you run your oscillator into that, then go into your filters and your VCAs later on. And it obviously creates, it creates a kind of audible slew on the sound because as you change pitch on the oscillator, the reverb's still ringing from the previous pitch. Oh, yeah. But you're shutting it on and off further down the chain, so it doesn't necessarily sound like reverb over the whole thing. You're colouring the sound, basically. Yeah, you, you're creating this kind of smush over the oscillator that is then cut in and out with the rest of your processing. Well, it's like back to what you were sort of saying earlier about 
interesting of how you actually have your effects path rather than just going oh and reverb should be the last thing in the chain you know it's like mixing up you know you may not get that full big reverb sound but you might get it doing weird things like that like taking the attack off something mm -hmm. yeah definitely um i'll pull up a couple more pictures to, as we kind of round off for people um ian sent us lots of nice pictures across is this current Setup for the studio. This looks more like what's behind you. Uh, that's yeah. That's the current studio. That's the that's the mode free patch. That's the whole thing. The V series three is not being used there, but that's the whole thing with the surge, you know, the uh, uh, Eurac and the Roland Hundred M. That's 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 the whole patch. It's yeah. a big patch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and as well, j again, just to encourage people to go listen, we've got, I said, very good detailed patch notes from Ian for. The uh, third track on there that I'll put in the description. We'll put all the links in. Uh, we should say as well to round off. If you've got this far, you're better than anyone that didn't stick with us and dropped off. And we've got some uh, five lots of download codes to give away for people to grab a copy of the album. Um, what should we say? First five people to comment a silly phrase. <laughs> what, what have we said? Um, first five people to say my tank is the largest. <laughs> my tank's bigger than your tank <laughs> but yeah let's go with that my tank's bigger than your tank first five comments on the video that say that i will send you a download code huh. um seeing as we're all going on about reverb tanks but um yeah we can put these videos up um with a video as well of, of the kind of remake patch from ian um so if you're watching this live we'll embed that at the start of the video we put up on youtube um yeah i guess Anything anyone wants to kind of round off on? We could all talk for hours on this stuff, um, and we will again another time, I guess. But um, that concert, Ian, if you want to remind people again. It's at the Capstone uh, Theatre. I mean, are, are you able to put a link into the, the end yeah, of the video? Yeah, we can put a link in there. Uh, yeah, it's Capstone Theatre on Saturday, November the 18th. So it'd be good if people can come and support that and watch Nigel and I uh, make a right old noise of lots of electrons and all the um, 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 mo uh, modular gear i'll have my spring tank that i'll, that I'll bash <laughs> i'll have the uh, i'll have the ons martin keyboard with me as well uh yeah i, I again i'll put we'll put links in to all this stuff but um ian body oh. nigel mulaney it comes up um yeah and the cymru beats video if you're thinking about that and you're maybe not sure go check out the cymru beats video yeah. of their performance in the rig rundown with sonic state that's very good as well um, just because I'm curious, can we get a quick, what are your thoughts on the 808 and SH-101 that's been reissued today? Really quickly, Matthew. Uh, I, have, <laughs> I, I have the originals. Yep, yeah, all right, not bothered. <laughs> um, Greg, any interest? The 808 is ridiculous. With a TR-8 already out there, it's got a single output, unless you want to use a USB. It's like... <laughs> I don't really, I just I don't really see the point of it. Um, I didn't realise this was us just slagging Roland stuff off. <laughs> <laughs> As I started saying it, I knew we were going to do this. <laughs> if I wanted to get an SH-101, I'd, something a bit like it, I'd get an Atlantis. Because mm. yeah, it seems like good. that, but more of it. The Atlantis is very good. Sounds great. Yeah. It's the closest thing I've played around with it sounds like an or SH. doesn't really sound like one but a base station 2 is really cheap and it's analog and it sounds really yeah great. micro brutes mini brutes nice little sim voices um well your thoughts on that and just to close on the, the I, didn't, I, I didn't even know they had a come out today i've been busy in the studio <laughs> here. i used to I used, I used to have an sh2 that was really a Fat little synth, two VCOs and a sub, sub VCO. Now, if they put the SH2 out again, I might be in, interested. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was a great synth, actually. Really nice. Of the SH09, which I much prefer to the 101 in terms of talking sonic quality, obviously the 101 had the sequencer and the arpeggiator that were very good for the kind of dance stuff they were used for. They don't sound anything like each other. I, I've got an SH09 and an SH101. Mm. The SH09 is much smoother around the edges. Well, the SH02 yeah. is basically the 09 with the extra oscillator, isn't it? Yeah. I think yeah. it's the same circuit, same architecture. 
Um, they do sound very good. Um, it's the only kind of vintage mono synth I've kept hold of, actually. Or any kind of real vintage synth. I've had a couple, but the 09 stuck around. Incredibly basic, but it does sound very good. Oh, yeah, it is. Really good. Cool. Well, thank you very much, Ian, for your time and running us down this. Um, my tank is bigger than your tank. If you <laughs> want to download code, I will message you uh, links um, and download codes specifically when you've left the comment. All the descriptions below. Check out Ian's stuff. Um, and, yeah, cheers for watching, everyone. Cheers, Ian. See you later. Thanks a lot. Cheers.